Hey guys, today we're getting downright serious. Welcome back to Envision Prototypes. If you're new to our channel, I'm Nick, standing next to my 56 Chrysler that we're about to cut up like it's never been cut up before. That's right. Now before we get into all that fun stuff, I'm gonna take you around the car, show you all the cut lines, show you where we're gonna be cutting, how we're gonna be cutting. We have to take and fix the roof because if you watch the previous episodes, you would remember I said that somebody snagged this car up, this body up off the chassis way back when, when they were restoring it up by the center of the roof. And they create a little too much crown on this roof, which caused the doors not to close. So anyway, we're gonna take care of all that. Doors not closing won't be an issue after we're done. Now you might be looking at these chains that I've got set up here. You might be saying, hey, you just said the guy picked it up by the roof and he bent it. Well, we're not picking up the body at this point. We are supporting the roof so that when my dad starts cutting, you know, I start cutting, it's suspended. And then once we make all the cuts, we just take it, roll it back and set it aside so that we can work on the rest of the body and cutting the rest of the body up. Now inside the car, we've got these raised sections in the floor and with the bucket seats we're gonna be installing, it creates a little too much height. So we're gonna take and remove those areas there as well as there. And we'll see. In the end, we might just take and cut the floor entirely out and redo it. But I don't want to get too far ahead and cut the car up to where it's just a pile of sheet metal on the ground because, well, it, things can get out of hand very quickly at that point. The floor section through here, if you guys can see that red Sharpie line kind of right there and there. That's the eight inches we need to remove out of this floor to shorten the car in this area. So the rear section will be pulled ahead. We retain the original mounts to bolt up to the mounts on the frame there. So that's gonna be all good. This B pillar is gonna be removed and we're gonna relocate it a little further back. Uh, back here, there's gonna be a whole lot of changes. The areas in blue, that and that are gonna be left behind. It's gonna remain one with the rear section of the body. The roof, is going to be cut off through here, around here. And there's a section here that's going to be removed as well. Two doors had a more graceful line that came down to the quarter panel. So we have to re-arch that. So that section is going to be removed. Coming to the front here, we're going to make a cut across the roof through there. And we will have to remove eight inches out of the roof. So the whole thing will slide ahead when the back slides ahead. The C pillar is gonna be widened. Again, two doors have a wider surface area in here. So leaving it like that looks kind of strange. These fins, we're gonna keep them. Otherwise it doesn't look like a 56 Chrysler anymore. You just start changing the car to the point that it's unrecognizable. That area there, that's going to have to be removed and pull the fin ahead. So it blends in to this imaginary door in this area here. And as for the lower quarters, that rusty area, that's gonna be all gone. You can see it's pretty, pretty hammered. See all the ripples there? Can't fix that, can't fill that. So that's all gonna be cut away and remade. We're gonna, might even remake a whole quarter, we'll see. So the roof will be cut across the back there and that roof come off and we'll set it aside. The trunk area is a little bit tricky because we have a section in the trunk lid that we need to remove as well. There's about the 10 three quarter inches, whatever it is, that's coming out of there. Also has to come out of the trunk floor. So that the rear edge is pulled, pulled ahead. The spare tire holder, that's gonna be deleted. The filler neck, again, deleted because I don't want this fuel door that really doesn't fit too well to the, to the body. It looks like an afterthought. Yes, you need a fuel door. It's not a green machine. We might relocate it somewhere else. We'll see. So everything I talked about on that side, again, has to be done on this side. So everything's been marked out, uh, except for across the back of the window there. I have to finish that. And uh, yeah, so main thing, get that roof off, and then just start dissecting and bisecting and secting the body until we have I guess a whole bunch of pieces. Well, we're gonna take and lift the front section up into place, plant it up there, turn it around, of course, 
And then once we're done with the back there, removing the eight inches, actually seven, because we need some overlapping material. This floor is really solid. That's factory metal right there where the undercoating was. And that's, that's tar, it looked like somebody, uh, I guess they did it at the factory where they poured melted tar all over those seams. So we've been scraping and pulling and all that stuff, but I don't wanna to get too far ahead in cleaning all this, especially when we're gonna be removing a lot of the sections. So that's gonna be about it in terms of uh, chit-chatting. So come along set up there. There's a plate that was put in through here. So it allows us to pull down, you actually see it right there where they bent it. Pull that thing down, straighten that crown out a little bit. It's too much. Like I said, three eighths here, five sixteenths over there. Hooked on by this B pillar. This is solid, so it's not gonna go anywhere. And we're gonna fix that. And then we're gonna take and cut it all apart. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and enjoy the show. All right guys, so as you can see, we've got a space between the top of the tape measure and the roof. We have to bring the roof down that much. When you stand back, you can't tell close up. When you stand back, this roof has a bowl right here, a crown that's a little bit too much. So we're going to come along, got a plate in here, hooked on, hooked onto the B pillar, and we're going to take and pull down now. We're going to go past because this thing is going to spring back up as soon as I let off. So just leave that there as a guide. Everything's creaking. Okay, let's back it off. See how much it, it just jumped right back. So, we'll go a bit further. Okay. That's it right there. How's that? Keep going. Same as the other side. We just jumped past the edge of the roof. You're flat now, you're gonna go past. Okay. Go we'll past about a quarter of an inch at any point. I'm just watching the roof through here and you can see it actually yeah. comes down the other way. Yeah. Okay, how are we? Well, just a hair past the edge. I don't want to get the other click because it might be too much. Go ahead. That's okay. It. Let's see what we have, oh, come on. So to the underside of that rail, not the drip rail, but the, the channel, the main channel. Yeah, to the very bottom, to the underside, yes. Oops. I have 42 and a half, just a hair under a half. I got exactly the same thing here. Just a hair under a half. Okay, that's it, we're done. Let's cut it apart. Okay, here goes nothing guys. Houston, we have separation. So the roof is now separated from the front cowl section, windshield area. And with that chain fall, that helped out a lot. Now we're gonna get into the back area and do some cutting here. We want to retain this surround around the rear light. So we're gonna cut on the number one line, cut through here and on the inside, since we'll be fabricating new support structures, 
sorry, I'm shaking. We're going to just cut up and through there and separate that from the roof as well as across the back. Can't forget about that. Now, this thing might... Wow. See the flex in the body? Front versus the back. That's why with convertibles, they put so much more extra bracing in. If you think you can just chop the roof off and run sand's roof, you can think again, because look at that. Uh, oh, that's much better. There is a, a web right there inside. Okay. So I'm not sure if you cut through there, it's, this is still hooked up to that web. I might have to use the plasma and open it up some more. There are flies coming out of this car. Oh, come on. Yeah, they like wake up and they fly out. <laughs> now we, all we have to do is clip this last one inch here on both sides and the roof is clear. Okay? Yep. I think I did, went through. Second. That's going to go up a little bit more. Behold, open air 56 Chrysler Windsor. Newport, the one with no roof. And in a few minutes, no fins, no quarters, and no floors. Let's keep going. Watch your eyes, guys.
That's good. And we can cut that off. Okay. Hey. So there's our 10 and 3 quarter inches. something straight to run on. So this area here is going to stay with the back trunk rear fascia. We'll make our cuts through here afterwards. Uh, this wheel spare tire tub, probably get rid of that. Let's blow out this filler neck cover. Boom. So this sheet metal on this car, it's 18 gauge and we've used some zip blades up, a lot of zip blades up trying to get through it and for us just to cut through a trunk floor, we'll probably go through 30 zip blades. So we're going to get the big guns out.
Okay, so everything appears to be cut through here. That spare tire well is loose. No, not quite. Not quite. I think we have a channel through there. Yeah. Um, gonna mean more cutting. Plug your ears, guys. I think that got it. Those there. Oh, we're loose. I guess your fin is good there. Yeah. I'm stuck here. Ah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> this is surprisingly quite heavy. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll get this out and keep trimming. With what's left, you can't really identify this car as a 56 Chrysler. Most of everything identifiable has been trimmed away. Now this is truly a sight to behold because these are actually 16 gauge or just under 16 gauge. And with the undercoating, I'll show you, it made it next to impossible to try and blow through that with the plasma because of the undercoating and that just burns, burns, burns. So we ended up using the gas saw and just, just cutting them out. Actually at this point, I'm actually tempted to restructure most of everything in here. There's one main beam that goes across there where those mounts are, uh, trying to leave that in place, trying to leave that in place, but everything else is, it's, it's done. Like uh, this one here, there you go. She's, she's down. See how easy that was? Just kick it, right? Next step with the front braced, supported there, the back braced, supported under there, underneath the, uh, where the axle goes. We can now make our final cut right through the center. Now I was doing some reading the other night online and uh, learned a little something about this car. Chrysler actually referred to this as a super scenic windshield, giving you more visibility than the standard cars of the era, of the day. And the reason you ended up with more visibility, according to them, most of the other brands had a vertical post here. And it, the vertical post would align itself with telephone poles, sign poles, people making it difficult to see. Well, Chrysler leaned theirs back a little bit, gave it an angle, and that allowed the driver to see pedestrians a little easier, according to them. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, if it is, well, we might probably will be doing a little more angle in this area. That's gonna involve a little more surgery here, to get a little more angle here, but it's gonna give the car a sportier appearance and give it a super scenic deluxe windshield. So there we have it. Give me a minute, we'll fire that thing up again, make some noise, make some smoke, and make our final cuts. Cut, cuts. One cut to cut it in half, second cut to shorten it up. I did find a bunch of sandwiching in here. So that was a previous work that was done. So more than likely, these rockers are gonna go as well. It'll be easier to make one full rocker front to back than try and piecemeal sections together like that. So that, uh, you know, the final result will look a little bit better. You won't need as much filler, if any, with one piece rocker. It'll be stronger too. And like I mentioned, that post has to be moved back. Oh yeah, and these arches over the rear window, or the back door window, are gone now. They're laying up there. So we're gonna have to re-bend those, soften them up a bit, and reinstall them further ahead to allow for a more graceful side appearance. Check this out. Right where the trunk hinges, there's a stress fracture in the bodywork, in the metal. So we'll have to address that later. Just a weak spot in the body. Okay, let's do some more cutting.
So the blade's not quite long enough to get through the rockers, so we're gonna have to excise some material. But if you guys saw the movement, she's moving around. And there we got it. See the undercoating? It's over a quarter inch thick and it's just it's coming off the painted metal. So either it wasn't prepared properly or I don't even know if that's factory or not. It's it's pretty thick. It might be factory. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. Um, somehow I don't think so, but you never know. With all the work that was done on this floor, I'm thinking it is after after the fact to seal things up. So there we go. A little bit of weight there. The 16 gauge floors, that's insane. The floor is actually thicker than the webs that run down the side of the rockers. These are 18, that's 16. Okay, one more cut on the tunnel and we're gonna have two cars. Let's take a closer look at what we don't have anymore. We have a very interesting setup here. Now, if anybody's installed floors in a car before, they know it's not an easy job and it takes quite a bit of time. So we're gonna have to, you know, clean all this up, go through the wire wheel, take off anything that's loose, and then just do an overall tidy up of this floor, the sheet metal. But before we do that, I wanna see what it looks like up on the chassis. So we're gonna take this front section. Let me go knock off those exhaust fans. That's much better. Okay, so what we're gonna do is pick up the front section, spin it around, and plant it on the chassis. And then we'll take this back section, same thing, and up there. And then we're gonna see where we're gonna flange, how we're gonna flange, and basically tidy all this stuff up. Those posts have to be removed yet, but I need something to lift it by, so it's a perfect opportunity to use that three points up and in. Back here, well, we gotta be careful because even though this is very rigid here, this windshield or rear window surround, uh, we can't lift it by that. We're gonna take and put a four by three or four through here and lift it up by this rear deck section. Let's stand back here and take a look. Yeah, she looks pretty short. Really, Nick? Duh. You've chopped most of the car up. Nothing left. We could try and slide it together in the floor to see what it looks like, but uh, there's jack stands. It's, it's not gonna be a good plan, so be easier to get it up there. Get the real feel up on the chassis. All right, I'm gonna tidy some of this stuff up, get things rigged up, and we'll get her up there. I think here's somebody coming too. Perfect timing. Oh, wow, that's neat. Don't you think that windshield's a little bit high? I think we can make this chair work. Check it out. It's a swivel. 
the 60s cars. Oh, Some yeah. Of them had a swivel. Well, they could just yeah, the seat and step out. The Thunderbird. That's right. The Thunderbird. Yeah, the Thunderbird had a swivel seat. We'll call us a Thunder Windsor. Thunder. <laughs> okay, I better get to work. <laughs> yeah, that's enough driving around in a convertible. Wow, that's a scenic convertible, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Open air. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're tipsy. Oh, we're really tipsy. All right, guys, we've got the bodies, body sections, up on the chassis. It actually doesn't look too bad. I don't know if we're going to run with a two door. The four door might look quite interesting. Short door up front and shorter in the back. Now, this back section is going to come ahead a bit more. We're sitting, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a bolt right there. So we need to slide ahead. And that'll be taken care of after we cut away these rockers. We need to maintain these mounts. There's a mount just under here. And in the front, you can see here, everything's lining up perfectly. Right there. And over here. It's a passenger side mount. So obviously I need bushings and all that stuff, but hey, we just cut a car up into a million pieces. Okay, eight pieces, give or take a few. So there we have it. So there's no real point in cleaning all that up. I thought we could perhaps save it, but in the end, it'll be quicker, easier to just fabricate a whole new floor. Locate mounts for seats and get all that established. This front piece isn't too bad. Looks like somebody jacked the floor up there, the car by the floor. Uh, we'll see. We'll see about that. Yeah, it's still sitting up on the chain fall, just kind of dangling. Didn't want to put all the weight down. This side's nice and tight. There's a, no space there, but it's the other side that's the issue. Very cool. And look, the floor is clean. Gets to be quite a nuisance to walk around in that undercoating and grindings and cuttings and stuff. But that's part of the process. So you push your head so far and then you just got to do a cleanup. Rear axle isn't mounted yet. Disc brakes on the back, it's gonna be good. We're working on the front, building a conversion set for that. So we have discs on the front as well. There we go. So once the back section is joined up with the front, However we do it in the next video, videos, it's going to take more than one, and that post gets moved back, then we'll bring the roof in and do our magic, whatever you want to call it, up there. Oh yeah, we can't forget about those fins. So once that's joined together, we'll bring the back section in, create a jig at the back, and mount it, slide it forward, line everything up, and fix it to its new location. There has to be a bunch of trimming done up and through there and all that stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, let us know in the comments. Hit the like button. If you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button. It helps our channel grow, gets it out there. Until next time, guys, take care.